How are you doing, Gabriel? Mm. Good, thank you. Good. Um, well, I love the series. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, such, but I mean, the thing, for, I mean, despite being a kind of real spectacle, uh, this is such a character driven story, isn't it? Was that, I mean, that's part of the appeal to me as an audience member, but was that part of the appeal to yourself as well, getting involved and, and getting involved in season two? Yeah, I, um, I think that um, you have to engage the audience with people that they might be able to identify with. Um, because they're ordinary people caught up in an extraordinary situation. Um, as indeed we all are. We're caught up in something extraordinary that we can't at the moment uh, defeat or solve. And what we're trying to do is just like in the series, we're trying to work out um, through practical, logical, scientific ways, how do we do this? And we've proved that we are capable of solving something as huge as this uh, through science um, by developing a vaccine. That's an astonishing achievement. And it's very optimistic uh, that maybe we can solve other great problems through uh, surrendering to the expertise of, um, you know, science. Um, but I think that if you don't engage the audience emotionally with characters that they can identify, it, it would end up as a lecture and people don't want to see lectures. Primarily, they're entertained. Primarily, they look at this and say, what happens next? And that's, that's the most crucial point of adventurous storytelling. What happens next? It's the way children listen to stories. It's the way we listen to stories. Um, it's what Charles Dickens understood when he left cliffhangers, um, you know. So um, I think it works as a thriller, but it also works as a commentary on the world that we're living in at the moment. Because yeah, I, mean, I remember when the when the first series came out, it felt relevant in regards to climate change. And now, if you were to go back and watch that first series, it would feel relevant in atta in attachment to the the COVID pandemic. And I mean, do you think sometimes the best way to kind of tackle and approach real life issues is through sci fi and fantasy productions? Because it feels like sometimes maybe the the best way to understand our world is to sort of step out of it. That's a great point, and I agree with you 100%. And I think that that, that is the real function of, uh, of great fiction because it illuminates the world in a way that fact sometimes can't. Um, if you look at why horror is so successful, it allows us to put our fears in there and the scream... Uh, you know, or the shock that we experience is by almost by osmosis because we can't deal with the reality of the horror of sometimes of living, but we can put it into a fictional story and resolve it that way. So fiction has a powerful, all, you know, films, television, painting, poetry, all, all art combines if it's if it's truthful to illuminate the, the, the world in a way that nonfiction often can't. Yeah, and the, the the production quality here is just incredible. I mean, you've been obviously in the industry for a while now. How, how impressed and, and maybe even surprised are you at the kind of rise of, of TV through the years? Yeah, that's that's another um, that's another interesting question. Um, there was a time when people lined around the block to see the new Woody Allen film or the new Bergman film, and they waited in a line patiently to go in to see the three o'clock show. It was like the way music was distributed. People waited for the album to come out. One person bought it, they went to the flat, they listened to every track, they listened to it again. That's not the way people entertain themselves anymore. I think changes in social behavior have also influenced the way people receive their entertainment. People are more, they're less community orientated and more people can watch 24 episodes of something 
on their computer by themselves. The, the time when people sat around collectively watching an experience has changed. The interesting thing to think will be when this is all over, this pandemic, will people flock to the cinema in the same way? Or is cinema, even pre-pandemic, in a way, is it beginning to lose its power to capture us in the way that, that it did? Um, so it's a very interesting question. Tell, there was a time in television, people looked down on television because it was regarded as you know, something that was an inferior form of entertainment. But television can now replicate the budgets of big films and it can deliver spectacle in your house. And you say to people, look, I remember a time when, when I went to see a 70 millimeter film projected onto the big screen when I saw Lawrence of Arabia for the first time. Well, to a kid who has a computer, that's just a thought. Just like saying, I remember hearing the Beatles for the first time. Yeah, okay, great. Now let me get back to watching whatever. Um, a young kid doesn't miss the 70 millimeter screen because he's never known it. But I remember it. And I remember what the power of cinema is. But television now is the ruler. Netflix, Amazon Prime, these are the new studios. And studios now don't do mid-budget films. That, that role has been taken over by Netflix and uh, Showtime and all those things. So what you have is very small budget independent films, which are more and more and more difficult to make, and gigantic franchises. Batman and all those things. And Netflix and Amazon have moved into the middle and they're making medium budget, high quality things for a fraction of what it would cost to make it as a film. Yeah. I, guess, I, mean, I mean, this is just yet another great character for you. And, you know, when... Kid, you know, when kids are growing up, they want to be sort of scientists, they want to be astronauts, or they might want to be police officers. But do you think, because in your career, you've played such a myriad of different parts, has that facilitated some of those kind of innate desires that we had, those childlike desires to, to, to be all those types of things? I guess in some ways, you've kind of experienced so many different types of people in different types of professions through the, the prism of your roles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're a kid and you're pretending to be something and you're playing with your friends you're you're in a kind of a movie i mean you never think of it as that but you, you are in a kind of a film and yeah you're saying i'm the bad guy and i'm ch and nobody says well what's your motivation to be the bad guy did you have a deprived childhood they start running and you start chasing them and that's the way it is i never thought that i would go into acting i never thought i would end up in films never now, for, I, I did, it, it wasn't even in my consciousness. I'm going to do a Western in Montana next, starting next week. And when I was a kid watching cowboy films, watching people getting off horses, tying them up on the thing, walking through the saloon, walking up to the bar, ordering a whiskey and then taking out a... To me, that was beyond fantasy. And now I'm getting to do it next week. Yeah. And if nothing ever happened after that, I'd be quite happy to know that, you know, I've played gangsters and pirates and prime ministers. And, and you go into those worlds and it's fascinating for three months to be living in them. Like I shot a, a thing a few years ago in which I played uh, the British prime minister. And we shot in all those places. And I got to be, or at least imagined I got to be the prime minister for three months, people opening doors and people saying, Mr. Prime Minister, do you have an answer? And you think this is all bullshit. <laughs> it's just hilarious. I'm getting paid to be a kid. But we all prescribe to that bullshit for the, in, the, in the name of entertainment and long may it continue. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, Gabriel. Being a real pleasure speaking to you. I could have gone on for hours, but um, best of luck with the release and with your Western. I hope you get to enjoy being a cowboy next week. I will. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. 
Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.